experience over youth in that particular match. Well, it looks like what we're gonna have here is Carmen Lee, the number five seed in the draw from Canada. World ranking around 601 against top seed, Lily Zhang, number 138 in the world right now. Um, this ought to be an interesting matchup. However, uh, obviously the favorite has, to, you'd have to go with the favorite and number one seed here at this point. We've seen upsets before. You never know when you may see another one. So we'll pay attention to this. Lily on her serve takes an early 2-0 lead. Good opening offense, aggressive shots by Lily. Paying off so far. Mostly the forehand. It's what most players' favorite shot is, and they're most consistent and most powerful. Carmen taking a little extra time, thinking things over before receiving the serve. Oh, great over the table forehand smash by Lily. Yep. It's a long ways to reach over the table and still be able to generate that much power with your forehand. Just excellent technique. That backhand exchange, Lily moving the ball around nicely, one into the body and one wide. No good return. Serve so loaded up the spin, you get a ball back. It looks a little bit high. The spin holds the ball uh, straight up instead of jumping at you a little bit. And Lily whiffed that shot. Well, you know, Lily effectively putting it in cruise control here at seven to nothing. Uh, I, th I think perhaps maybe some jitters on uh, the part of Carmen. It's hard to say. Seems like it. I think she uh, knows, even though there's only a little bit bigger difference in the seating in this tournament. Uh, number one to number five, there's a pretty big chasm in their world rankings. Lily being by far the favorite, yep. showing that up so far, but pulling out the first point. Carmen did avoid the bagel. Absolutely. Well, you know, clearly people who are following table tennis in America know this, but for those of you turning in and viewing for the first time here, you know, Lily, Lily Zhang, probably one of the top three trifecta at players on the women's team this year, along with Erica Wu and Ariel Singh. You know, amongst those three, we've probably have more talent on the women's team than we've ever, ever had before, especially considering their young ages. Um, as they get older, they're just going to get better and better and better. And it's really exciting things in store for USA Table Tennis. Yeah, on the women's side, particularly Ariel Singh at the recent uh, World Championships in the third, make it to the third round, which is an accomplishment in itself. Uh, she ended up losing to the eventual winner, who's a number two seed in the world, losing four games to two. And no other player on the women's side got more than one game against the eventual winner. So that's a good sign for Ariel. Absolutely. And again, uh, Lily and Ariel are at, at the same club, practice with each other, so they get very, very good. Uh, experience. They both have a lot of international travel and experience under their belt so far. And uh, as Mike said, we're really very, very pleased. So again, Lily looking at uh, another game point, Miss, missing a serve off the edge of the table. It shows you how precise the service placement has to be. You miss it by just a little bit, and it looks like a very silly mistake when it's not really. And there it and is. Lily finally pulls out the first game, 10, 11 to 4. And both players head off to their coach for a little bit of advice. We think Carmen may need a little more than Lily at this point. But off camera, both coaches are focusing on some technical aspects of the game and the strategy. You know, the thing that excites me too is not just our juniors, but our cadets are so strong as well. I mean, the US cadet team, not many people have really been following that other than the families and the friends and the coaches of the individuals. But I think 
the next two or three years, you're going to see a lot of cadets gravitate up towards the junior levels, and they're going to show a whole lot of talent and skill. And clearly, that's because of some of the amazing clubs in, in the United States, ex not, not exclusively on the West Coast, because there's plenty on the East Coast too, but I have to mention the Gaojun Table Tennis Center, the uh, World Champions Table Tennis Academy that Stefan Feth runs, and also, of course, the ICC. Uh, three amazing table tennis centers on the west coast of the United States. All right, and bringing up youth players, we've, uh, for years in the, in the men's division, sometimes the women's as well, some of the uh, experienced players from other countries emigrate to the United States and uh, still play very, very well uh, in, in the United States, although they're uh, not quite at the top of the world, and that's where the U.S. is, those are the players that we've used in our world championships and Olympics for years. And just in the last two or three years, as Mike mentioned, there are some young players coming up the ladder that we're really excited for our future in the sport in this country. Absolutely. You know, and the problem with naming two or three clubs that are great, you forget some of the others. I mean, there's the Grace Lynn Table Tennis Club, the Lily Yip Center in New Jersey, and you know, I could go on and on and on. They're just very, very good training centers for a lot of our young, uh, youngsters. And they have... Plenty of good uh, world-class experienced coaches that are teaching them to play from a young age the correct way. Don't have to break bad habits uh, like players used to. So it, it's becoming more and more professional and well-coached uh, uh, sport with all of these centers around the country. So we're, uh, again, we're just very excited for the future. Yep. Yeah, I could go on. Wong Chen's club, et cetera. I better stop while I'm ahead. All right, oh, okay. we're back, back, back at the action here. Back, back to the match here. At, yep. Locked up at two all. Oh. Oh, nice rally uh, with Carmen Lee and Le Jong, but... Uh, We've got a score right now in this second game of three to three. Lily to serve. Three to five, Carmen would serve now. She pushed it a little long on that last shot. Sailed off the end of the table. See what she can do here. Again, a little bit long. So Lily jumps to a seven to three lead here in game number two. Oh, amazing reflexes. That's why Lily Zhang is the number one seed in the women's uh, side of this tournament here. Unbelievable skill, agility, and reflexes. Oh, the net dribbler for Carmen Lee. Every now and then that happens. She'll take it. Tried to loop it, but that was a little bit short from the net. Couldn't quite get to it in time to give it the proper lift. Great movement of the ball, moving it from one court to the other to the corner. Absolute great ball placement there. Oh. 
Yeah. Good return attack from Carmen Lee to get her to six points. Uh, however, the score is now six to ten. So a long, a lot of work to go here to catch up, if possible. No, nope, couldn't quite connect on that. Game to Lily. Well, folks, don't forget uh, important dates for 2013. The Cary Cup Championship here in Cary, North Carolina. Friday, March 15th through Sunday, March 17th. $18,000 in prize money. Put it on your calendar and come to the biggest giant round robin in the United States. Lots of fun. And if you've never played Cary Cup before, you don't want to miss it. This is a tournament you want to go to at least once in your life. Clip the top of the net. So point to Carmen. Great ball placement there by Lily. That was the right idea and it paid off for her. Yep, too high. She'll pop that one back every time. Okay, a timeout's called. And the score's five to two in favor of Lily here in game number three. Probably a wise timeout for uh, Carmen Lee's camp. Try to regroup and figure out what does she have to do here to get back into this match. Problem with playing against opponent with the skill base of Lily is there's just not a there's not a lot of loose kinks in the armor. Everything is in place. She's such a strong player and versatile, and she can adapt to different situations as well. So let's see if the coach gave uh, Carmen some words of wisdom here. She was trying to go down the line on that one, Jim. Yep, I think uh, Lily put a little extra bite on that uh, underspin push.
Very good point. Even I thought she was going cross court with that forehand last second, just changed the racket yep. angle, went to the backhand, yep. caught Carmen flat footed. Lily just a little bit too consistent, a little too well good good placement on the ball. A little too much spin. Just a little more in almost every category. And 10 to match point. Big forehand finishes it all for Lily Zhang, the Absolutely. top seed in the tournament. Great match. Three straight. I mean, it made it look like Lily didn't break a sweat on that, but she did. And, you know, Carmen's an incredible, great athlete as well. It's just the, the, the power, the technique, and the skill and experience of Lily is just too much. Yeah, especially the experience, I think. You get a little more international uh, experience. You see better shots. You realize what's possible, and you work towards that as a goal. And, uh, and it pays off with a three straight game win. In the women's team final match, U.S. up 1-0.